Hi, Peter. I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. So lovely to meet you virtually. Hi. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, maybe I'm you could here, pick off. I'm I'm... Yeah, maybe you could just yeah, start I, by I... Um, tell, giving us an introduction to CryptoZoo. I don't really know oh. how you capture what this is all about. It's, uh, it's a pretty unique No, I thing. don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I'm sitting in Sweden, uh, actually, here. I love yeah. ABBA. Yeah. And uh, I'm working with Annie Frail, and we're doing a, a American Swedish co-production called The Box. So it's very strange talking to you from England now. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm working with her. And but Cryptozo, it's it's a mix for me. From the beginning, seeing drawings and listening to the story, the outline and dash talking to dash for an invitation was like a mix between all russian 40s 50s animation together with japanese anime and mixed with the beatles uh, yellow submarine where where all the lonely people get together and fight the evil society and become sort of a, a little mini society of their own and accepted by by the by society by getting together mm -hmm. and i think crypto is always just a metaphor of all these lonely people paul mccartney <laughs> that get to this zoo and they find a refuge in the zoo because they can be there and of course people are laughing at them looking at them but you know, in 2020 and 2021 and 22, 23, many zoos are gonna be shut down in the world mm -hmm. and the animals are gonna be let free. Mm -hmm. And circuses have now forbidden all the elephants, the tigers and the uh, lions to be dressage, to be there in the circus. And I think we have evolved. And I, I think if there's a crypto zoo, a sequel, I think they all gonna leave the zoo and become part of the society. Mm -hmm. And I said earlier, one of my heroes, is, you know, is a guy who would ended up in the crypto zoo was Stephen Hawkins. Mm -hmm. And Stephen Hawkins is one of my heroes. And I think hundred years ago, he would have been burned on a, stake or thrown in the water to drown or put in a nut house but actually Stephen Hawkins taught us more about the universe and how to be human beings and it came from a guy sitting in that wheelchair talking through a tube until his very last breath he was fighting to talk and to tell us the gift he had gotten from what I call God and uh yeah, a little sadness in my eyes. But for me, everything he said, everything I've seen from him and read, it's like 100 years ago, he would never had a voice. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the people who call village fools, maybe they have stories to tell us that we're not aware of. Maybe they have psychic gifts and they can see things we don't see. And for me, that's the core of CryptoZoo. That's what I read in. But, but as I said to somebody else, I, 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 I'm allergic to marijuana and I, I don't do drugs, I've never done. But I think a lot of people have seen it said it's so much better with a joint. <laughs> 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 I understood everything. It's so cool, <laughs> but but it's but I I I think it's it's just doing a parallel with Stephen Hawkins. It's 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 time I think, and also the pandemic. It's it's a good timing mm -hmm. for for really listening to people that might 
been locked up 100 years ago or 50 years ago, electric shocks or whatever, because they didn't fit in. And we did everything we could to put them in a box and to function. And some people did it because of a good sake. But maybe we should take more time to listen to those people and, and learn from them instead of just lock them up or to knock them dead. And once again, Stephen Hawkins is the biggest example. hundred years ago, we would never have learned what he taught us. So it's, it's far maybe from the cryptozoan, but that was my take. And also I love the simplicity of the animation. And I, I love the simplicity of telling a story and, and the poetic view instead of just doing the don't put this on tape maybe but like the marvel you know the boom crash bang and bang zap bang chum chang here's something it takes time it takes time and you got to be a little patient it's like a large one tree or movie or a art movie you have to give give it 15 minutes and see if you're drawn in if you don't like it after 20 minutes 15 minutes then you can turn it off, but, but give it at least 15 to 20 minutes and see how you feel. Mm -hmm. So hopefully people will do, take those 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. And I think it has a little, not political, but social message to tell us that even if, even if you have a disability, we have the Paralympics that are becoming bigger than the Olympics soon mm -hmm. because we find it so intriguing and fascinating with people without legs running and going in wheelchairs or, you know, play, playing basketball in wheelchairs or volleyball that that for human beings like the last Paralympics was as big as the Olympic itself, mm -hmm. which is for me a big victory. Mm -hmm. And and to see a guy with one leg, there, there's a great Netflix uh, documentary about the Paralympics where a guy gets, they cut off his arm and one leg with a machete and now he's a sprinter and running in the Paralympics, 100 meters, and he's so fast. Mm -hmm. And he said, you know, I, I, I will never give up. They killed my mother and father. They chopped off a leg and they chopped off an arm. But I, I'm, I'm not never going to give up. I'm never going to give up. I do this for, for the kids who are watching me. Whatever happens, don't give up. Keep on fighting. And if they don't accept you, force them to accept you mm -hmm. so for me that's maybe politicizing a little bit mm -hmm. <laughs> cryptozoal mm -hmm. going going further from the fairy tale but that was the thing that intrigued me from the beginning and i think if it's a sequel i think they're all going to just march out of the zoo mm -hmm. and walk into the local city and just be part of the local, local society mm -hmm. and be accepted. Mm -hmm. And maybe the, you know, the ordinary people have things to learn from these people mm -hmm. who can do things they can't do and they can see things we can't see. Mm -hmm. So it's always easy to dismiss people with mm -hmm. some kind of disability. Mm -hmm. And if they talk mumbo jumbo, we don't want to listen to them but maybe they have something to tell us mm. in the end, so. And, you know, thinking of animation, perhaps in Western society, we still have an association, you know, there's something for kids. I mean, this is definitely not animation for kids in no. lots of respects, no. <laughs> but it's stunningly beautiful. And as you say, perhaps more of a slow burn than films we're used to. So what is it that's so attractive about animation as an art form? And I guess in the, you know, the Japanese have known for a long time, uh, you know, oh, how yeah, it can be. Yeah. And what are the particular well, the, challenges as an actor being involved in animation, you know, voicing rather than acting in front of the camera? Well, I, I, I love doing voiceovers. I, I'm doing a lot of voiceovers. I've been lucky. 
and it's it's just fun. It's it's to be a little boy, twelve year old boy doing voiceover. It's it's so fun. It's so much fun, and if you can contribute something, and I was offered the part. It's not the biggest part in the world, but you know, in a beautiful painting, it's just enough. In a Van Gogh, it's just enough to be a blue little color in the left side corner because it illuminates the whole field of sunflowers. Mm -hmm. But to be that little blue light and and I, I never see small parts. I think that every part is essential for a big picture. I see, I see it more like pictures. And because I worked with Bergman, I started, my mentor is Ingmar Bergman, and he said to me from the beginning, it doesn't matter if it's a small, small part or a big part, you still just want color in a big painting. And no shame in being the color purple that's in there just for a moment. Maybe that color purple will stay in in one spectator's mind forever because it was beautiful. So that's how I look at art, like it's a collective work and especially this kind of this thing, it's a collective piece of art and it takes forever to do the animation and they work hard. And I like the simplicity of it. It's so far away from the Marvel boom, crash, bang, you know, Superman-ish everything. This is, yeah, this is more like magical mystery tour. No, yeah, uh, the Yellow Submarine. Mm -hmm. You you don't really know what's going on mm -hmm. in Yellow Submarine, but but it all makes sense if you if you if you just watch it. It just makes sense in the end that all the lonely people, when they come together. They're not lonely anymore. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Fucking Paul McCartney is such a fucking great songwriter. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, with a, with a... a golden heart. I hate him with a golden heart. <laughs> what a genius. What a genius. Yeah. I think I'm out of time already, but thank you so much for all those yeah. wonderful insights yeah, and, and for being part of this beautiful, stunning and, you know, really out there psychedelic film. It's like one big acid yeah, trip. Is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I saw it. I started seeing it with my 11 year old daughter and she said, should I really see this? <laughs> and I said, no, no, no. You, you, you can go on your phone instead. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably wise. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So right. I'm, I'm sitting in the middle of Stockholm. <laughs> I've got my tea too, but <laughs> yeah. not another mug. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much, Peter. Thank you. Lovely okay. talking to you. Thanks Bye. very much. Thank you.